listening po. Welcome. Welcome po sa LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. And uh, please uh, follow our social media. Join our church every Sunday, 9 a.m., Wiley Chapel. At ito po ang ating uh, journey of a lifetime. Dalawang episodes na lang. Tapos na tayo sa Walk Through the Bible. So nagsimula po tayo sa Old Testament and then sa New. And dito na tayo sa Revelation. No? At uh, halos uh, dalawa na lang po. Dalawang episodes na lang. Siyempre, ang revelation ay sinulat ni John, the beloved. So, nung ginawan po natin ang outline to, ay uh, hinati natin sa tatlo. Pero hinati-hati natin sa uh, maraming episodes <laughs> kasi <laughs> hindi kaya na... No, no. Kahit na fast cut lang, eh, mas maganda. Medyo pagtukon na natin ng pansin kung ano yung mga dapat nating matutunan. No, yung outline natin, yung una, ano yung nakita, ano yung nakikita, at ano yung makikita pa. So, nasaan na ba tayo ngayon? Pag-uusapan po natin ay uh, chapters 10 hanggang 16. At uh, kung matatandaan nyo po, nagtapos tayo, no? doon sa uh, pinag-usapan natin no, sa mga last uh, uh, episodes po ay uh, yung the seven seals of revelation no doon sa seven seals ng revelation sa ikapatong seal na to meron tinatawag na doon sa pinaka seventh seal kapaloob noon ay yung tinatawag na seven trumpets uh, so last week pinag-usapan lang natin yung first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth trumpet. Ngayon naman itutuloy natin sa seventh trumpet. Pero kasi yung chapters 10 to 16 hindi lang naman patungkol sa seventh trump sa seventh trumpet 'yon. So tingnan natin no, ano yung makikita natin. Siguro umpisa natin sa chapter 10 no. Itong chapter na to ay kumbaga din describe nito na parang break lang siya no. Parang interlude kumbaga sa kanta, parang ganun. Uh, interlude siya between sa sa sixth and seventh trumpets no. At uh, kumbaga uh, dito mapapansin niyo na parang God delays but doesn't cancel his final judgment. Na parang ayun eh, mga wala na pinagkaiba ngayon. Kumbaga pansin niyo parang bati pa umabalik ang Panginoon no. Eh dinidelay niya pero it doesn't mean na nag-cancel na siya ang kanyang plano sa kanyang final judgment. Kumbaga God delays are not necessarily his denials. So let's just keep on praying. Kumbaga, uh, people must know, no? tayo mga bagong Kristiyano ngayon, dapat ay uh, tinutuon natin ang buhay natin, ang pansin natin, ang kalakasan natin no? sa pagpapalagarap na salita ng Diyos kasi people must know, malam, dapat malaman nila no? ano ang nangyari, nangyayari at mangyayari pa sa susunod na panahon. Ayan, punta tayo sa chapter 11. So may lang yung chapter 10. Uh, okay, ulitin ko lang. This is a fast cut. Uh, ang pagbabasa po ay nasa sa inyo at pagbubulay-bulay. Hindi porque mabilis kong diniscuss yung isang chapter ay talagang madali na siya. Kumbaga, o mabilis siyang basahin. No? Pero kumbaga, yung kinukuha lang natin yung dapat nating ma- maintindihan sa mga chapters na to kaya I encourage you to dwell more on chapter 10 no ngayon sa chapter 11 ano mat- matatagpuan natin dito sa chapter na to kumbaga we can see without question that God is dealing sa kanya mga pinakamamahal na piniling tao ang mga Hudyo no? dito the Jewish temple has been rebuilt and the Jewish nation is uh, worshiping there again so, isa sa mga uh, signs, no? kapag na-rebuild ang Jewish Temple. At nako po, sa panahon ngayon, marami ng plano. Marami ng pagtatangka. No? At pag yan ay nangyari, eh, malamang-lamang. Eh, alam na dis na padating na ang Panginoon. 
Ayan. Pero ang tanong, what will the antichrist uh, what will the antichrist no do this uh, do to this temple? Anong gagawin ng antichrist sa temple na to? No? Eh sino ba tong antichrist na to? Tingnan natin kung anong plano niya no. Sinulat sinulat ni Pablo sa 2 Thessalonians 2:3 to 3 to 4. Sabi niya, don't be fooled by what they say for that they will not come until there is a great rebellion against God and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Yun, Antichrist yun. So darating ang, pang, pang, ang panahon na magkakaroon talaga ng matinding lawlessness. Ay nako, eh, di ba? Makikita at mararamdaman nyo naman ngayon sa panahon ngayon. The one who brings destruction, yun ang Antichrist. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God claiming that He Himself is God. Ayan. Kapag meron kayo nakita na tao na uh, nag-office or nag, uh, nag-stay doon sa i-rebuild na temple no, doon sa Israel, yun na yung Antichrist. No, yan yung clue, parang ganun. Kumbaga, uh, uh, si Pablo ang sumulat nito. Ha? No, tingnan natin ano sumulat ni Daniel. And he, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So si Daniel, diniscuss yun ha? This is like hundred, hundreds of years before, no? Pero tingnan nyo, kinonfirm ni Matthew. So when you see standing the holy place, sorry, when you see standing in the holy place, sino? The abomination that causes desolation. Yun yung Antichrist. Spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. So, kinonfirm na ni Matthew yung sinabi ni, ni Daniel. Okay. So, ang tanong, eh, teka, ano, uh, may nabanggit kasi na, kumbaga, ma- ma- mapapa sa ilalim, no? Na mga Gentiles, itong, uh, itong, itong, uh, Uh, temple. Tingnan natin sa Revelation 11.2. Sinulat doon, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months. Well, for now, yung exact location ang nakatayo doon, yung Dome of, Dome of the Rock. No. Papunta kay Israel, yan ang makikita nyo. Oh, isang, isang side, medyo may remnants ang temple doon. Pero pagdating ng panahon in the future, no, uh, sinabi dito na may measure yung loob, pag na yung labas, kasi yung labas, eh, sure, itatrample daw yung Holy City for 42 months. So there will be an invasion or something or whatever. No? So uh, dito, uh, may binanggit, no? pagkatapos ng 11.2 sa verse 3, sa pag sa pangyayari na to may binanggit na dalawang witness or witnesses no kumbaga uh, the two miracles they perform no uh, dito sa mga witnesses na to eh teka basahin mo natin 113 and i will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy yon no for 1200 and 60 days clothed in sackcloth. So, okay, para mas maintindihan natin. Si John ang sumusulat. Sinasabi niya, no, sa pangyayari na to. Okay, sa so chapter 11. Nung kung saan nagdinidil ng Panginoon yung mga Hudyo, yung temple, no, at saka yung paggrab sa temple, merong witness. Okay? may witness na na dalawa dalawang tao okay so sabi magpo prophesy daw itong uh, witness na to for 1260 days na nakasuot lang ng 
sa ako. No? So, mag-focus pa tayo dun sa talaw- dalawang witness. Basahin natin sa 11.5-6. If anyone tries to harm them, ayan, baga, eto na yung mangyayari. Fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. These men have power to shut up the sky so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague or plague or plague or plague as often as they want. Wow, paka powerful naman itong two witnesses na to. No. Eh, parang, parang familiar din tong two witnesses na to kasi no kung ta- um, uh, kumbaga uh, pag tiningnan mo sino ba tong two witnesses na to no parang familiar siya sa akin eh kasi sinabi sa Exodus 7:19 and the Lord spoke to Moses say to Aaron take your rod and stretch out your hand on the waters of Egypt on their streams Sa second kings and Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50 if i be a man of god let fire come down from heaven so parang tung dalawang witnesses na to it talks about yung si tungkol kay Moses and Elijah na nabanggit din no na ito yung kasama sa transfiguration kung maalala niyo di ba yung tatlong yung disciples or apostles ay gusto pa silang gawa ng bahay Pero anyway, eh, kung titingnan natin, uh, dito mapapansin natin yung 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 bang ano yung bang uh, ability, no? Ability na ito ay posibleng mangyari sa mundo na pwedeng nag indicate no? ng ng uh, na makikita na lahat ng tao. Kasi pag tinignan mo yung 11, 7 to 10, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt, where the Lord was crucified. Hmm. So from the bottomless pit, Darating na naman it darating itong si uh, si Satan is papatayin itong dalawa pero makikita daw na lahat dito magpe-play siguro. No, yung tinatawag na social media, satellite TV and info technology na ma-witness ng lahat. Well, honestly medyo matalinaga rin siya sa akin no, kumbaga uh, mahirap siyang isipin literally no oh, mahirap din siya isipin figuratively no pero kumbaga we need dito nga yan eh. we need to be alert what is happening around us no kailangan ma-connect natin sa nangyayari ngayon doon sa pangyayari na sinasabi sa Biblia pero for sure no sa malamang sa malamang magpe-play ng malaki ang social media satellite TV and info technology because a lot of people are communicating through these things so, abangan natin. So, punta na tayo no, doon sa seven trumpet na no, para matapos na itong mga trompeta. Ano ba meaning ng seven trumpet? No? Alam nyo, sa 11.15, the kingdom, no, then the seven angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ and He will reign forever ever. Mm-hmm. So sinound na yung trumpet. So ang ibig sabihin, no, eh ni-reveal na ang kingdom ng Panginoon. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in this temple the ark of his testament. O kaya it, it, sa, sa sa Old Testament ang tawag ito, the ark of the covenant. Kasi covenant testament tipanan is ibig sabihin <coughs> or promise or something. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay, teka, teka, teka. Okay, ang Ark of the Covenant dito na sinasambi ay nagsisimbolize 
sa presensya ng Panginoon sa Israel. At ini-indicate na to na sa bayan ni Jacob o ni Israel, tapos na. Ano, almost tapos na. Almost tapos na ang trouble. Okay, almost. <laughs> okay, so tingnan natin ano nangyari sa chapter 12. Nako, kayo ba ay medyo natatalinhagaan sa ating mga pinag-uusapan. Kaya importante mag, uh, magkaroon tayo ng uh, panahon magbulay-bulay. Ano? At uh, binibigyan lang natin kayo ng uh, perspective of what to expect na pag binasa nyo ang Book of Revelation. Sa so, chapter 12, ano makikita natin? Dito, description of war no ang makikita natin. Uh, una, yung war sa earth. No? Pangalawa, war sa heaven. At uh, pangatlo ay war uli sa earth. May dalawang main characters dito sa chapter na to yung babae at saka yung dragon. Well, the woman no represent yung uh, kumbaga, uh, God's chosen people. No, from whom ang ating Messiah ay uh, kumbaga uh, ay uh, kumbaga um, ay nanggaling, no. And uh, through him ang ating Messiah ay uh, ang church ay isinilang. Okay, sino naman yung dragon? Eh, obviously, yung dragon ay eh, yung devil or Satan or whatever his name is. Okay? So, yun na. Lagtawan na natin chapter 12 kasi mostly ito ay pag-uusapan naman sa mga susunod na chapters. Okay? Puntahan natin. Chapter 13. Ay, koala. Koala ba yan? Or ano? <laughs> yan yung kumakain na eucalyptus eh. Anyway, uh, dito sa chapter 13, meron dalawang beast. No? Yung the first beast comes from the sea and is a composite of the four beasts that represent successive world empires mentioned in Daniel 7. Okay, sabi nila, uh, yung, yung beast na to ay yung, siguro yung Babylon, yung Persia, alam niyo so yung panahon ni Daniel no however no it is clear this world power goes far beyond any historical world power that has yet existed okay no ano ibig sabihin uh, kumbaga maaaring uh, meron pang ibig sabihin no itong uh, uh, first beast na to No, sa sa Revelations 13, uh, 6 to 8, sabi dito, it began to speak blasphemies against God. Yung first beast, okay, sabi ni John, to blaspheme His name and His dwelling, those who dwell in heaven. So minumura niya daw ang Panginoon, yung heaven. And it was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. Sina ba yung saints, yung mga mananampalataya? It was also given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Ooh. All those who live on the earth will worship it. Everyone whose name was not written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slaughtered. Okay. So, we worship, we worship daw to. It. Hindi to, ano, kumbaga, it. Uh, beast nga eh. Kumbaga, uh, hindi lalaki, hindi babae. It. Kumbaga, uh, ang pagkaka-describe. No? All those who live on the earth will worship it. So, itong beast na to, eh, that comes out from the sea, ay na-identify nga na kumbaga, ay uh, enemy ng Panginoon. Okay. No? Kung titingnan mo, madami kasing indicating marks tong beast na to eh no rises from the sea o sabi nila baka daw manggagaling sa dagat yung mga kalaban yung pagka sino ba yung mga superpower pagdating sa sa karagatan andiyan ng England andiyan na whatever so i don't know maring yun maring hindi naman di ba kumbaga it comp- composite daw to ng beast of the Daniel a beast of Daniel sa chapter 7 no pero Uh, kung bagat natapos na yun eh. Diba? Pero that time mukhang very evident yun na yung, 
yung Israel sinakop ng Babylon, sinakop ng ano yan, ng, uh, ng uh, Persia, Persian Empire, Roman Empire, di ba? Uh, Grecian Empire. So, I mean, uh, tapos it receives a deadly wound, deadly wound healed, strong political power, strong religious power, guilt of blasphemy, wars with over... These are things na madaming pwedeng interpretation. At nakikita ko ngayon, ang daming nag interpret nito. Iba-iba. No? Maari, may binanggat sila na Russia. May binanggat sila na China. May binanggat sila na si President Obama. May binanggat na ang Pope. May binanggat na si Trump. I don't know. So we need to be. We need to stand alert kagaya ni Noah during his time na chaotic death. Okay? Let's move on. Para, ano, kumbaga, in the second beast, kumbaga, who is the dragon that, and what does he try to do? Sino da yung second beast na dragon? No? Sabi dito, it exercises all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and compels the earth and those who live on it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. All right. So, <laughs> ito ay hindi nusuporta niyo yung first beast na pag may napansin kayo in the future mayroon na sugatan na healed nako may ibig sabihin pero sa sa kasi sa ano eh no? sa, sa history ang dami ng ganun pero let's see di ba okay punta na tayo sa chapter 13 okay in this chapter no kumbaga um uh, I'm sorry. Punta na tayo sa... Okay, so nawala ako eh. Alright. Dito sa aking notes, sabi dito, the second beast, no, will for... Ayun, sorry. Ito pala. May binanggit kasi dito na... Uh, okay. The second beast, no, Bukod sa iko-confirm niya yung isa, yung first beast, hindi lang yun. No? He will force people to receive a mark. Ayan, ito yung mga sikat na sikat na alam nyo. The word mark means to impress or to stamp. Without this mark, they will be unable to buy or sell. Hindi ka daw makakabili. No? So, makikita natin dito na kumbaga... Uh, Uh, kung baga, anong gagawin ng mark na to So, itong uh, pag sinabi kasing two beasts, no, pag uh, sinamarize natin, obviously, ito yung anti-Christ religion. A, a counterfeits, a counterfeit spirituality. A religion that serves government and allegiance to anti-Christ. No? So, Basically, basically yun siya. Okay. So, chapter 14, no? anong mangyayari? Okay, sorry, sorry. Dito, no, actually, no, yung, alamin muna natin, medyo naguluhan ako. Alamin muna natin, what is the mark no, according sa Revelations 13 to 18? Uh, thir- verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 18. Sabi dito, here is a wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding Calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Ito na yung famous na, naku, baka 666 yan. Naku, yung, yung uh, ano, ang dami na lumabas. No? Nandiyan yung, uh, yung vaccine, nandiyan yung uh, kung ano, ng mga chips or whatever, or ATM, or uh, cell phone, whatever. No? Ang dami na, ang dami na lumabas. No? Pero, honestly, no one knows for sure the exact meaning of that number. But, 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 it will play a principal part in identifying the Antichrist. So, ngayon, wala pa talaga nakakaalam kung paano siya maikukonek sa Antichrist. So, lahat is speculation pa lang. Pero someday, eh, you'll know. Diba? Chapter 14. Ano yung makikita natin sa chapter 14? Okay, this chapter is uh, really a miniature glimpse of the rest of the book. Ang baga para summary. It's like a table of contents for the remainder ng revelation. It describes very briefly the establishment of the kingdom, the vials of wrath, the battle of Armageddon. No? So, 
na kung saan naman pag-uusapan natin sa susunod ng mga chapter. So, jump na tayo sa chapter uh, 15. Okay. okay. Ano mangyayari sa chapter 15? Okay. This chapter is a prelude doon sa seven last plagues. No? Which are not described until sa chapter 16. Okay. The people mentioned in this chapter are apparently those who suffered Uh, persecution and death from the beast dun sa chapter 13. Okay? So, kumbaga, uh, interesting. No? Dito rin, sa chapter na to, sa 15, makikita natin yung tinatawag na, na nakita ni John yung seven angels coming out of the temple doon sa heaven na kung saan uh, kinumission sila ng Panginoon to pour out the seven golden vials or Another term is a bowl, okay? Vial or bowl. Na punong-puno ng wrath of God. Ayan. Diniscuss na yan sa chapter 16. Yung wrath of God. Yung seven bowls or seven vials. So, isa-isahin natin. Yung first vial ay patungkol sa mga source. Naku, pigsa. Okay? So, magkakaroon daw ng uh, pigsa. So, some believe... The method of uh, marking people with the mark of the beast will cause the mark to become infected and incurable. Hmm. And second bayal, ano makikita natin? Or second bowl. Uh, dito makikita natin yung the sea turns to blood. No? Baga, already one third of the sea life has been killed. Kung natandaan nyo yung pinag-usapan natin mga previous uh, 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 episodes natin, dito everything in the sea dies kasi yung yung uh, pag binuhos na tong second vial na to second bowl ay magiging dugo ang uh, karagatan oh parang hirap isipin no ano na may kita sa third vial or third bowl dito ang rivers and springs will turn into blood Kumbaga, this judgment, which is very similar to the tre- uh, third trumpet, kung maalala nyo, na yet much more severe, will now affect all the rivers and most of the world's water supply will be lost. That means loss of life on an unimaginable scale. Uh, those who have rejected Jesus' blood will now be forced to drink water that is like blood. Nako. Ay, ito nga yung ano, ano yung parang katakot naman. <laughs> parang alam niyo. Pero pag binabasa mo, katakot naman ano, yung mga mangyayari pero oh, most probably abutan natin. Most probably hindi. Ma kinuha na tayo ng Panginoon by this time. No? Uh, fourth bowl or fourth, fourth vial ano na nakalagay doon. Ito yung tungkol sa araw. Okay, ano mangyayari? In this judgment, mag intensify naman ang araw, yung sikat ng araw. So, men are scorched with the heat. So, sobrang init. Now, some believe nuclear weapons will destroy the ozone layer that protects the ozone from harmful rays of the sun. Hmm. Baga, uh, sabi nga dito, the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun And it was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were scorched by the fierce heat. And they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and gave Him glory. Oh. Uh, ano may kita naman sa fifth bowl or fifth by, vial? At the darkness. Darkness all over. This vial is directed to the throne of the Antichrist. This darkness will have grave psychological effects on people. Uh, so, medyo people will be crazy pagdating ng panahon na to. Ano yung sixth vial? Yung sixth vial or sixth, vo- sixth bowl ay nako, matutuyot ang Euphrates River. Alam yung Euphrates River, no, baga, no doubt, ito yung eastern boundary ng Israel at this time. No, kung matatandaan nyo, in covenant noon between God and Abraham concerning doon sa promised land, no, nilagyan niya ng mark 
kung ano yung binibigay niya sa Israel. Sabi niya, Genesis 15.18 In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river of Euphrates. Okay. Malaki yun. Eh, alit lang na Israel ngayon. Ibig sabihin, lumalabas, no? na during the time, kahit ng time ni David at ni Solomon, at hanggang ngayon, no time in history, have the Israelites actually possessed all the inheritance. Kasi when you talk about from the river ng Egypt, no, at uh, hanggang sa river ng uh, Euphrates, you're talking about from the river Nile hanggang uh, ng, sa west, sa western part, at saka sa eastern part na Euphrates River, eh teka, ang sasakupin na bansa niyan, eh, kumbaga, pagdating ng panahon, teka lang ha, para mas malinaw, ganito yung pagkakaintindi ko eh. Pagdating ng panahon, okay, na pinor out na yung sixth bowl na kung saan matutuyo ang Euphrates River, By this time, ibig sabihin na sakop na ng Israel ang Lebanon, ang Syria, ang Saudi Arabia, ang Kuwait, ang Iraq, ang Jordan. So, mga big time yun. Ang laki nun. Di ba? Eh, di ba? Lit lang ng Israel. So, ibig sabihin, masasakop nila yon At ibig sabihin, yun talaga yung binigay. na promised land. Okay? So, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa nila nakukuha. So, malaki pala, no? Yung promised land. Pero, anyway, uh, kumbaga, kung titingnan natin mabuti, no? Dito, uh, lumalabas na uh, anim yung bansa na dapat nilang sakupin para, no? dumating sa punto na matuyo itong Euphrates River. No. So, <laughs> eh, ang tanong, anong modern day superpower? No? Ang, uh, kumbaga, would, kumbaga may, may edge on the, kumbaga dun sa northeast part na parang pwede makailam. Yun yung Russia, kung titingnan mo sa present time. Nang ano ngayon, nang, uh, nang, uh, nang maha pa. Okay. Alam niyo, it may seem an impossibility na ma-conquer ng Israel kasi kalit-lit niya nga laki-laki ng Saudi, laki-laki ng I mean ng Iraq, ng ano yun ng But kung titingnan mo noong sa history na no, sa noong June 1967, nagkaroon ng territorial war noon eh. Pero halos na double nila yung Uh, pag-conquer nila ng territorial borders sa maikling panahon lamang. So, ibig sabihin, that's very possible. Kasi nga, eh, nasa kanila ang, uh, ang uh, anointing ng Panginoon. Anyway, kung titingnan naman natin uh, sa verses 13 to 14, makikita na sa chapter na ito na describe yung tatlong clean, unclean spirits, no? maduming spirito. Probably si Satan to, Antichrist, false prophet, no? na nagdi-deceive ng mga nations to baka for the last for the last time ay magrebel sa Panginoon. Alam niyo, the nations gather at a place no called Armageddon. The word Armageddon means mountain of Megiddo. Okay. Darating ang panahon, so basahin lang natin and I saw three unclean spirit expressions that look like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of a wild beast and out of the false prophet. They are, in fact, expressions inspired by demons and perform signs. And they go forth to the kings of the entire inhabited earth to gather them together to the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. And they gather them together to the place that is called, in Hebrew, Har Magidon. Ang ibig sabihin ng uh, Armageddon ay Mountain of Megiddo. Okay, nasaan ang Megiddo? Ito po ang bansang Israel. No? Ito, nasa gitna niya. Halos nasa gitna niya. 
to. Halos ah, parang ano to ah. ah hindi ako nagkakamali eh. Hmm, di ba ano yan? Uh, Samaria or somewhere? I don't know. Uh, nandito kasi in Jerusalem. Ito yung capital ng Judah. Na kung saan ah, ibinalik nila yung capital ngayon. Oh, nandito ang Tel Aviv na kap- dating capital. No? Pero somewhere dito yung ano eh, Samaria na dating capital ng Northern, uh, Northern Kingdom. Anyway, ano ba itsura ng Megiddo ngayon? Ayan, no? Plains. Ngayon lang itsura niyan. No? Naghihintay sa parating na panon. Nag-exist po ba ang Megiddo ngayon? Yes. You can go there. Pwede kayo pumunta ngayon. Pwede kayo magpa-picture, magpa-selfie dyan. Nandyan, no? Walang nakalagay. Ibig sabihin, eh, naghihintay sa takdang panahon na meron dyan magigera o yung tinatawag na Armageddon o yung The Last Battle. Okay? So, the mountain of Megiddo. All right. Okay. Ano na? Yung seventh bowl no? or yung seventh vial. Nako. Dito, this will be the world's most devastating earthquake. Ayan. Great city split. No? Nako. Tapos, uh, dito, uh, mag, uh, kumbaga, sa, sa, sa tindi ng earthquake, magkakaroon ng renovation ng earth caused by this quake. No, to add sa katos, kat, catastrophe na to, may mga hailstones na weighing a talent or 94 pounds, ibig sabihin, will fall from the heavens. Okay. Hailstones, 94 pounds. Ano po ang 94 pounds? Most probably mga 5 foot 3 na babae, 94 pounds. Ganyang kalalaki yung hailstone na babagsak sa lupa. Sabi, mabigat yan. Pag dinag, dinaganan ka ng isa, dalawa, tatlong hailstone, eh, sigurado masakit sa katawan at baka ikamatay mo. Okay? So, kumbaga, in, this, in spite of the severity of this judgment, no, itong earthquake, itong hailstone, some people will survive. At ang nakakalungkot, they will continue to blaspheme God. Diba? So, mag-end tayo sa Revelation 16.21. And great hail from heaven fell upon men. Each hailstone about the weight of a talent or 94 pounds nga, parang isang babae na normal na 5'3". Pero tingnan nyo, men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail since that plague was exceedingly great. So, kumbaga, people will choose pa rin to blaspheme God. Next week, last na. Tapos na tayo. <laughs> Next Wednesday. We'll talk about chapter 17 to 22. Mahaba talaga itong revelation. At uh, kahit na fast cut lang, ay ang daming dapat intindihin. Kahit nga pa ulit-ulitin ko, hindi ko pa rin siya maintindihan ng gusto. Pero anyway, I'm trying as much as I can. Maaring may tama ako, maaring may mali ako, pero tulungan niyo ako na tulungan ang inyong sarili. At hanapin ang katotohanan sa Panginoon. Wala namang masama kung paulit-ulit natin babasahin, aaralin. Di baling magkamali ngayon. Huwag lang magkamali in the future sa pagpili kung kanino sasama. Okay? Sa Panginoon o the Sunday Christ. Anyway, we'll see you next week. 7pm. No? Uh, nako, madami pa tayong pag-uusapan sa huling uh, tagpo no? ng ating ano. So, episode hindi 6 of 7, kundi Episode 7 of 7 ng Revelation. Ayan. We'll see you. God bless you. Magandang gabi po. Uh, I hope na kahit pa paano ay may natutunan kayo as we tried to explain no, itong, uh, itong uh, part 6 ng Revelation. God bless you. Bye. Merry Christmas.